Ignorance is bliss is a term well used nowadays. This is evident as many of us use the phrase Ghana must go to refer to the checked bags we see everywhere when we're totally oblivious to how the name came to be. Moving forward in this video, I'll tell you all about how Nigeria expelled a million Ghanaians from its territory. In 1983, Nigeria garnered international attention with a bold and controversial decision. The expulsion of around 2 million undocumented migrants, among them a significant number of Ghanaians. Spearheaded by President Shiyu Shigari, this monumental move was justified on the grounds of tackling pressing economic issues and combating the influx of illegal immigrants. Moving forward, I will expantiate on the aforementioned crisis. President Shihu Shigari, adorned in his distinctive long hats, declared the expulsion in response to a confluence of economic challenges and concerns about the presence of a large undocumented migrant population. The economic landscape of Nigeria during this period was marked by the aftermath of an oil boom that had defined the country's prosperity in the preceding decades. However, by the early 1980s, a sharp decline in global oil prices and internal economic mismanagement had left Nigeria grappling with severe financial difficulties. Moreover, the expulsion directive issued by Nigeria in 1983 had profound consequences, particularly for the approximately 1 million Ghanaians who found themselves targeted. These individuals, initially drawn to Nigeria during the 1970s, had migrated with the hope of accessing economic opportunities and a more stable living environment. The majority of those affected were not only undocumented migrants, but had also become integral parts of Nigeria's diverse workforce. Ghanaian immigrants in Nigeria played pivotal roles across various sectors of the economy. From skilled professionals such as teachers, architects, lawyers, and doctors to unskilled laborers, they contributed significantly to the nation's workforce. Also, their presence reflected the historical ties between the two nations and the shared cultural heritage, creating a vibrant and diverse community within Nigeria. The economic downturn in Nigeria, triggered by the oil crash in the early 1980s, prompted a shift in the government's approach. Instead of addressing the underlying economic issues, political leaders resorted to scapegoating African migrants, particularly Ghanaians, for the country's challenges. The directive to expel undocumented immigrants, regardless of their contributions or how long they had resided in Nigeria, resulted in the forced displacement of many Ghanaians. For the affected Ghanaians, the expulsion meant more than just leaving the country they had come to consider home. It meant losing their livelihoods, homes, and the sense of belonging they had built over the years. The abruptness of the expulsion order left many without the opportunity to arrange their affairs or secure an alternative means of sustenance. In addition, the trauma of being forcibly uprooted from their lives in Nigeria left a lasting psychological impact on the Ghanaian immigrants. Many faced the challenge of rebuilding their lives back in Ghana, while others, unfortunately, met tragic fates during the chaotic exodus. Therefore, the Ghana must go bags, initially a practical item for travel, became symbolic of a painful period of exclusion and intolerance. Diving into Nigeria's economic state at the time, we see that in the 1970s, Nigeria emerged as a key player on the global economic stage, propelled by a substantial economic boom primarily fueled by oil production. This period marked a significant chapter in the nation's history, as Nigeria transitioned into one of the wealthiest countries in Africa. The driving force behind Nigeria's economic surge was its oil industry. In 1958, Nigeria discovered oil, and by the 1970s, the country's oil wells were producing around 2.3 million barrels per day. The oil boom not only significantly improved the standard of living for Nigerians, but also led to a surge in job opportunities, especially in the services and construction sectors. This economic growth attracted migrants not only from within Nigeria, but also from neighboring countries like Ghana. Due to the newfound prosperity of the country's lucrative oil industry, major international oil companies like Shell, Mobil, and Egypt established operations in Nigeria. The economic vibrancy of Nigeria during this era became a magnet for individuals from neighboring countries, particularly Ghanaians. Ghana, once considered a regional economic powerhouse as the world's largest cocoa producer in the 1960s, 
underwent a series of challenges. A crash in cocoa prices, coupled with political instability following the ousting of independence leader Kwame Nkrumah in the 1966 coup, created dire economic conditions in Ghana. Meanwhile, Ghana grappled with a challenging economic landscape. The crash in cocoa prices, combined with political instability, created an environment that many Ghanaians found untenable. The country experienced food shortages, long queues at grocery stores, and a general sense of economic despair. Recruiters from Nigeria actively sought individuals willing to take up various jobs, including teaching and casual labor, jobs that Nigerians themselves were reluctant to do. So, faced with economic hardships and political uncertainties, many Kenyans sought refuge and better opportunities in Nigeria, which had become known as West Africa's economic utopia. The Nigerian economic landscape offered the promise of employment, improved living standards, and stability. The Kenyans who migrated during this period included individuals from various walks of life, ranging from laborers and traders to skilled professionals, such as teachers, artisans, architects, lawyers, and doctors. Motivated by the allure of economic opportunities and stability, Kenyans embarked on journeys to Nigeria, often following routes through Eflau in Ghana, Loma in Togo, and then crossing the same border between Nigeria and the Republic of Benin. The migration wave was significant, with Kenyans establishing a notable presence in various sectors across Nigeria. The migration, driven by economic disparities between the two countries, characterized a period of hope and aspiration for Ghanaians seeking a better life in Nigeria. The expulsion order issued by President Sheyu Shigeri resulted in immediate and chaotic consequences, as millions of migrants, primarily Ghanaians, faced the daunting task of leaving Nigeria within a mere two-week ultimatum. The abrupt nature of the directive led to scenes of disarray at the borders, with individuals and families scrambling to comply with the expulsion order. As a result, the mass exodus created logistical challenges, turning the borders into chaotic scenes marked by overcrowded roads, desperate migrants carrying their belongings, and chaotic stampedes. The sheer volume of people attempting to leave, coupled with the urgency of the situation, gave rise to a humanitarian crisis. Many migrants faced difficulties in accessing transportation, and the chaotic conditions at the borders further exacerbated the challenges. The international community swiftly responded to Nigeria's expulsion order, condemning the decision and expressing deep concern over the unfolding humanitarian crisis. Leaders and organizations from various countries criticized the abrupt nature of the expulsions, highlighting the potential violations of human rights and the severe consequences faced by those forcibly relocated. Furthermore, the condemnation focused on Nigeria's disregard for established norms and protocols, particularly the economic community of West African states that allowed for some degree of free movement for West Africans within the region, provided they had the requisite paperwork. The forceful expulsion of migrants without proper consideration for these protocols drew sharp criticism from the international community. As the crisis unfolded, the international community, including organizations like the League of Red Cross Societies, responded with humanitarian assistance. Aid efforts aimed to address the urgent needs of the displaced migrants stranded at the borders. The provision of tents, blankets, and other essentials became crucial in mitigating the harsh conditions faced by those affected. One enduring symbol of this mass expulsion to note is the ubiquitous Ghana Must Go bags. Initially unremarkable and utilitarian, these checked bags became charged with significance as they were used by the departing Ghanaians to carry their belongings. The term Ghana must go not only described the bags, but also became a somber catchphrase encapsulating the expulsion itself. To those who are unaware, this expulsion mirrored a similar event in 1969 when Ghana deported millions of undocumented African migrants, primarily Nigerians. The reciprocal expulsions in 1969 and 1983 strained diplomatic relations between Ghana and Nigeria for years. The wounds from these incidents continued to affect the nation's interactions, even decades later. 
This historical tit-for-tat created tension between the two nations, impacting diplomatic relations for years. Decades later, the wounds of the Ghana Must Go saga still affect relations between Ghana and Nigeria. While cultural exchange and economic ties persist, formal apologies for the expulsions remain absent, leading to lingering animosities. This non-fictional event is a real example of Hammurabi's saying, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. This, however, does not apply in every situation reason being that an eye for an eye and the whole world goes blind, as Mahatma Gandhi rightfully quoted. Recent incidents, such as the forceful closure of Manchurian Nome stores in Kumasi in 2018, highlight recurring tensions. Complaints of Manchurians being targeted and blamed for rising crime levels contribute to a strained relationship. This article delves into the impact of immigration policies on displaced populations, emphasizing the need for fair and equal treatment. It discusses how power dynamics, identity politics, and unequal relations shape immigration laws and contribute to the challenges faced by migrants. The expulsion of undocumented migrants in 1983 notably Ghanaians, remains a pivotal moment in West African history. President Shihu Shigeri's decision, driven by economic imperatives and concerns about illegal immigration, had profound and enduring consequences for those affected, leaving an indelible mark on the collective memory of the region. As the global community grapples with migration issues, I conclude with a loud and stern call for leaders worldwide, especially in Africa, to govern in ways that prevents forced relocations and the marginalization of individuals based on nationality. This narrative emphasizes the importance of creating paths to prevent unwarranted exile and displacement in a world marked by uncertainty and constant mobility.